about the data analysis for Birkin Elmer HPLC or High Performance Liquid Chromatogram, which includes the startup of the program, the data labeling, the peak identification, and last but not the least, the interpretation of the data. So stay tuned and watch the video. On your desktop, click the Chromera Manager program. This icon will show up indicating that the program start initializing. Just wait for the program to load. Then this will appear. Under the control menu, click launch data only to view the results. A box will appear showing initialization of the details view. Once it opens, from the control menu again, click View. Under this, click Post Run. Now, you can access the result chromatogram. Just click the File menu. Under this, click Open Data. You can now see the data saved of your sample. Just click the item and it will automatically open the result data. So this is data labeling. So basically data labeling, so you just label the results of your analysis. So so first right click on the picture, then you will see command add user label. Click on it. And automatically the computer registers data one for the first pick. Then you can change the label's font color, change label background color, set label border. And you can also delete the user label, delete all user labels. So this is for the first pick. So you can change the font, font style, size. Then you can also, as mentioned, change the label background color. So here are the choices. Just click on it. So in this case, we click on the Fuchsia. Then, as you can see from the video picture, the 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 label has now background color. Then you can set the label border. And after that, you can delete. So that's for the basic, uh, basic commands for data labeling. Next is for the labeling of the peak area. So, so these are the f this is a sample of a uh, of a, a labeled data. So start. So right click, then click annotations. Then he here you will see the baselines, legend, peak data, peak field, peak names, peak search with no time events and user labels. So let's first click on baselines and legend so as you can see a baseline has been established for each of the peak then for the peak data as you can see click on it then automatically it will register the peak height then by clicking pick fill, so it will be filled by a color. Then pick names. So automatically, if you load this data, the pick will be labeled accordingly. So the first pick is your solvent. So this is a sugar. So second will be silos, and the next will be glucose. Then the peak search window. So you can you can choose if it is single plot, stock plots, matrix, overlay. Then so next is the plot style. So right click on the picture, then click plot style. So you will see here a command telling you 
what what blood type should you choose or how to how you or what what blood type you want so here are the title blood appearance curve colors for the baseline speak names pick data pick fill color pick search window time events so basically this this command lets you edit the output of your data. So what color you want, what is the appearance. So if you're lost, you can just click before it uses labels. Then it will auto the computer will automatically or the program will automatically do the labeling for you. We received the data from the HPLC itself. And now we're here to identify what these peaks would represent. So first, we press the action button, then go for the peak identification review. Afterwards, we input the variable name of the component. Then after that, we can focus or zoom into one of the peaks and identify its retention time. After getting the retention time of one of the peaks, we can easily get the other retention times of the other peaks. Afterwards, it can be analyzed through comparison with the other uh, with um, standard values within the program. This would result to easily identifying which of these peaks would correspond to which specific element or compounds in the database of the program. After we obtain our final chromatogram, the next thing we want to determine is the corresponding area for each peak. To determine the area for each peak, we just need to click the play button beside the sample name and it will reveal a table with the columns showing residence time and area. For example, I want to determine the area for the peak with a residence time of 0 0.375 minutes. So the corresponding area for this one is 2,381,417.38. After we obtain the area for each Peak. The next thing we need to know is the equivalent concentration for each area. For us to determine this, we need to prepare a calibration curve by running a known standard concentration in an HPLC and then plotting the peak area versus the known concentration. So, we have, I'll show an example on how to determine the concentration given an area. Consider the figure sugars final. We can see here that we have three dominant peaks. The first one is an unknown substance, the next one is silos, and the last one is glucose. <clears throat> By looking at the area of let's say silos, we can see that it has an area of 2,808.92 By using the calibration curve <clears throat> we can see that its area is roughly 0 0.35 or we can use the equations given in the calibration curve obtaining a concentration of 0 0.31 So, determining the peak area is just easy as well as determining the concentration if you have the calibration curve. 